Hello, hello everybody, and welcome back to another video. I'm Ann Blackwood, your Silicon Valley Sage Sister, here to bring consciousness to the forefront of your daily life to make life a little kinder and simpler. So I decided to do this 21 day meditation challenge over on Instagram. And I did this because between ads that I've seen for Teal Swan recently, because I follow her, and just talking to all of my other friends and acquaintances that uh, have spiritual practices, meditation is the number one thing that everybody recommends. And those who are deepest into their spiritual practice do, if not every day, almost every day. So I wanted to start doing this introduction to meditation for those who aren't used to meditating every day or close to every day. I'll even admit, I don't meditate every single day, but close. So that's what I wanted to do this video for, because as I started doing the 21 day challenge, I started to realize that there were more and more people reaching out to me asking for advice. So I thought I would do that here. So my first tip for all of this is don't expect to be Mr. Miyagi sitting on a stone, not itching, not moving, you know. You can't expect to be completely devoid of reaction and able to clear your thoughts right away. That's not the point anyway. The point of meditation when it comes to sitting in silence is learning to observe your thoughts and let them go, not clear your mind right off the bat. You will not be able to learn to clear your mind until you learn to observe your thoughts and let them go. So for instance, if you have an itch, scratch it and get back to your meditating. If I had a dime for every person in Shambhala meditation who scratched an itch and then went back to meditating, I would be a millionaire. In the beginning, you're not going to be able to resist your somatic, som that's better. In the beginning, you are not going to be able to resist your somatic feedback, especially even if you can, from the beginning, get really good at focusing on your breath, which is something I'll get into in a moment. If you have an itch, scratch it, and then keep going. Don't expect yourself to be able to resist. You know, you might have to adjust. Even I, in the beginnings of Shambhala meditation, having meditated for years, for shorter periods of time, would have to readjust because we fall out of alignment when we're not used to sitting straight for that long. Things like that. So don't feel bad if in the beginning you have to adjust, scratch, it happens. Which leads me to number two, which is don't hold it against yourself if in the beginning you're meditating for shorter periods of time. You are not, like anything, going to be advanced in meditating right in the beginning either. So if you have to meditate for three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever works for you, do it. If, you know, there are some people who are so uncomfortable sitting in silence with themselves because they've been through trauma that even sitting in silence with themselves for one minute seems like an eternity. So if one minute is all you can do, awesome. You did it for a minute. Also realize if you're only meditating for a minute at a time, you probably have some unsolved trauma, unhealed trauma that you need to resolve. And I would highly recommend that you find someone who can help you with that. Nevertheless, don't discourage yourself just because you're not sitting for long periods of time at a time. That's why I picked five minutes for this particular meditation challenge that I'm doing. Because even in the beginning when I was doing Shambhala meditation, 
We sit for 20 minutes, we walk for 10 minutes, and then we sit for another 10 minutes. That's 40 minutes total, but we're not sitting in silence for 40 minutes. We're doing different things. So the longest we actually sit in silence is 20 minutes. The longest I meditate at a time is two hours, but that's in 30 minute increments because I have, they're kind of like binaural beats, but not exactly that I use, and those are in 30 minute increments. So yes, I am sitting in meditation for two hours because I'm doing four of them in a row, but I do have a moment in between where I have to switch the audio. So even I'm not sitting in silence for 40 minutes. It's, it, it's, an, amb it's an ambient noise. So it's not like a guided meditation. And I want you to keep in mind when I'm talking about this, I'm not talking about things like guided meditation because guided meditation is different than sitting in silence. And if anything, I would want you first to practice sitting in silence before you get into guided meditations because guided meditations give your brain something to focus on and the point in practice of sitting in silence is to notice that thoughts come up. Which brings me to my next tip. When it comes to sitting in silence, the number one tip that I would say most people have when it comes to observing your thoughts and letting them go is the way in which you let them go is coming back to your breath. And what most people mean by that is quite literally paying attention to your breathing. You can do this by picking a cycle of breathing that you want to do. Like for instance, a great beginning cycle is four seconds of breathing in, four seconds of breathing out. That's what I would recommend most for beginners because getting into the different types of cycles of breath is kind of beyond beginning meditation. Um, but I would say of all of the beginning meditation that I've ever done, the four seconds in, four seconds out, um, was probably the best and most effective of all the bit. I don't know what's going on with me right now. But I am a little phlegmy today. <laughs> of all of the beginning meditations that I've done, the one that had us breathe in for four seconds and out for four seconds was a great place to start because it gives you the breathing to focus on without some sort of complicated breathing combination to worry about. So getting down to the nitty gritty, the whole point, as I said, of meditating in the beginning is learning to focus on your thoughts at, or not focus on your thoughts observe your thoughts and let them go. So rather than having your brain get drifted off in a thought, you start catching the fact that your brain is doing this more and more and then bringing yourself faster and faster back to your breath. That's meditation in a nutshell when it comes to beginning meditation. Because when we're sitting in silence, focusing on our breath, our brain is going to have thoughts. That's perfectly normal. There's nothing wrong with that. That is the point, is to start noticing my brain has thoughts. Then noticing these are the thoughts my brain has. Observing that thought, taking a note of it, saying, okay, I'm having a thought, first of all, and I'm catching the fact that I'm having thoughts faster and faster. Second of all, this thought is me being worried about money right now. And then going back to your breath. I honor and recognize this thought. And now I'm going to go back to doing four seconds in, four seconds out. And that's, that's really what it comes down to in the beginning. And that's, that's it. That's, that's it. You're not going to be able to clear your mind in the beginning, but you're not supposed to because those thoughts, 
are exactly what you need to be aware of when it comes to what your shadow work is going to need to be for your spiritual practice. And if there's one thing that goes hand in hand with beginner spirituality when it comes to necessities, meditation and shadow work are the two big ones. If you don't know what shadow work is, the easiest way to explain it would be like spiritual therapy. And I'm not just saying that <laughs> because it's what I do. I'm saying that because it's true. People don't realize that as you get deeper and deeper and deeper into the mystery schools, the first things you do isn't learning magic the way people would expect it to be. It's not learning manifesting. It's learning to heal and grow first so that you can start controlling yourself for a lack of a better way of putting it so that you can start manifesting because until you are healed you cannot grow and you cannot manifest if you're not growing so learning to meditate learning to observe those thoughts and let them go is one of the best best things you could do for yourself on a daily basis when it comes to a spiritual practice that you can do every day that will benefit you in so many different ways including just being able like i said to not just observe yourself and your thoughts after the fact but it'll get you to the point where you are going to start being able to then catch yourself in the moment and if there's one thing those of us who have things happen that we regret later wish we could do it was catch ourselves in the moment when you have those thoughts of oh my gosh why did i do that or why didn't i say that learning to meditate is exactly what helps you learn to slow down in that moment and start catching yourself in the moment but you've got to start learning to observe yourself in silence in meditation first all right, guys, thank you for joining me for another video. I do monthly meditations that you can sign up for through my monthly email list. I just do one a month. That's a link in the description that you can sign up for. I also do, along with my one-on-one -on -one shadow work counseling, one-on-one -on -one meditation lessons and sessions, you can sign up for my free clarity call or email me that's in the description as well don't forget to check out all the awesome links <laughs> i have in the description right now as well as don't forget to subscribe may the energy you serve serve you well and let's keep making our way through